Good, let's turn our Bibles to Proverbs, Proverbs chapter 24. We're going to look at one verse today, Proverbs 24, verse 16. Proverbs 24, verse 16. It should be a familiar verse to many folks. It's something that we should have in our heart because it happens to us many, many times. Proverbs 24, verse 16. Proverbs 24, 16. The title of the message is, When You Fall, It's Time to Get Up Again. When You Fall, It's Time to Get Up Again. When You Fall, It's Time to Get Up Again. Proverbs 24, verse 16, the Bible says, For a just man falleth seven times, and rises up again, but the wicked shall fall into mischief. Brother Jay, can you please pray for the message? Right, thank you once again. <clears throat> for allowing us to gather together in this local Naobimi church. Thank you for your King James Bible. Thank you for salvation. Thank you for being so good to us. We ask you, Lord, that you will fill within your preacher, your Holy Spirit, give them power, liberty, Lord God, to declare your world to the hearers. And we ask you that you fill the hearers with the Holy Spirit as well. Open our hearts, minds, and ears to your word. Help us not to doze off or let the wicked thoughts come into our minds during the preaching. But help us to wholly give ourselves unto your word. And help us to change from inside out so that we can be better Christians for you. So that our conversation and our conduct will be pleasing in your sight. For those who are not doing well, for whatever reasons or God, whether it be physical, whether it be emotional, or any other issues they're going to pray that you'll be with them. Well, we ask you that you receive all the glory and honor, protect us from the devil's attacks. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. 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 When you fall, it's time to get up again. Christian walk is never a straight line, as you know. Even if you've been saved for a day, few days, even weeks, or even just few months, you do see that Christian walk, you know, as we go up, go towards, you know, that day when the Lord will come back, or the day when we, you know, leave this earth, it's never a straight line. It's always a loop. You know, you go up, you go down, you go up, you go down, you go up, you go down. But what does that mean? So if you go up and you go down, that means that you're going to fall. Yes. Right? You're going to fall. You and I fall all the time. Yes. You have to admit it. There's yes. no such thing as someone who never fall. Right. The only person who never fell was Lord Jesus Christ. Yes. Everybody else in the history always falls. Now, before going into the points, you know, just looking at the verse, for a just man falls seven times and rises up again. You know, in the Old Testament, there's no better person to illustrate this than David. David fell many, many times, countless times. You know, David committed adultery, David committed murder, and he had done like slew of things, you know, against the Lord. However, one thing about David is that he always rose up again. Amen. He just fell, got up, fell, got up. Man, but, but there's a universal law according to the word of God. Galatians 6, 7, right? You reap what you sow. Whatsoever man soweth, thou shall he also reap. So David had to reap so many of his sins. I mean, the Lord still gave him grace and mercy, but... He still got right and rose up again. However, there is an opposite of David. When you think about David, who comes to your head again? Saul. Saul fell, and he just fell. He never rose up again. Spiritually speaking, many Christians are like Saul. They start up pretty well. They become anointed, and then they just fall. And they commit spiritual suicide many times. And that's what Saul did. 
And you and I have to be careful. People who commit suicide, it just happens just like that. Yeah. I mean, it's a progression. You know, your life is a mess. You are a mess. Everything is a mess. And then you keep on thinking, you know, should I kill myself? Should I kill myself? Should I kill myself? And then one day you just go through it. So go up to the, you know, Golden Gate Bridge, you know, jump off the bridge. Go to the high risers, jump up the thing. If you're a subway, jump in front of the subway, you know, cut yourself here. You know, I mean, get a gun and then shoot yourself on the head. You know, people just do it. And then I'm not just talking about unsafe people. A lot of Christians kill themselves. However, one thing is that Christians, if you are a Christian, if you trust in Christ, even if you kill yourself, even if you commit suicide, it's one of the common questions people ask. You'll still go to heaven. You know, once saved, always saved. Why? You know, we see this just man. In the New Testament, you and I become just. We become justified by faith in Jesus Christ. Simple as that. So we have to get that doctrinal stuff out of the way. Let's go to Romans chapter 5. Romans chapter 5. So if you don't know if you are just or not right now in this church age, if you don't know if you've been justified or not, then you have to be justified. Simple as that. And you have to know for sure that you're justified. You might be already. Who knows, right? But with all these false teachers out there, false doctrines out there. People get confused all the time. So you have to get it right. Romans chapter 5, verse 1. Therefore, being justified by what? Your good works? Your baptism? Your experience? Jesus in your dreams, right? Your money? You know, no. Therefore, being justified by faith. We have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. So you should have that peace. You know, this faith with salvation, you should have peace. Yes. You should never worry about burning in hell. And there's a good illustration that Dr. Rickman said. You know, there was a, back in the day, there was a Cuban Missile Crisis. Oh, yeah. If you're old enough, you kind of remember. Kinda. Yeah, you're too young to remember that. <laughs> I mean, if you know, you know, history a little bit, there's, there was a Cuban Missile Crisis. Some people don't even know what Cuba is. It's a country. Right down there. A lot of Americans don't know geography. I mean, <laughs> you ask them, you know, where's Canada? Well, what state is that? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so well, that's another topic. So there was a Cuban Missile Crisis, and then one, and somebody told Christian that, you know, Castro's gonna launch his missile and blow us to hell. Christian goes, correction, he will blow me to heaven. Yeah. Yeah. That's the response. Right? Yeah. Yeah. If you have trusted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior and him alone, you've been justified. Yeah. The moment you trust Lord Jesus Christ, you've been justified and you're declared righteous before God. I mean, think about it, how great that is. If you have trusted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, God declare legally, legal declaration that you are righteous and your sins have been completely washed away. Amen. Why? Pay for by the blood of Jesus Christ. That's it. So that's a legal declaration. So why would you even worry about burning in hell? You don't have to. You're just... You're justified by your faith, by putting your trust in Lord Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Because his blood washed away all your sins. So no need to worry about burning in hell once and for all. If you have been, that means either you've been backslidden, yes. you're living in your sins, you have no assurance of salvation, you've had false teachings yes. throughout, you might be saved, but someone's been telling you that you're not saved, right. you know. Now, there are some Baptist preachers out there that want to hold their congregation and they say, you know, you're committing sin. You're not saved. Wow. You, know? you know, they start teaching Arminianism, you know, wow. works by salvation, you know, and then people get confused, right? We don't do that. Amen. Only reason we ask if you're saved or not is just to make sure you're saved or not. 
You know, it's just checking. That's it. Amen. We will not ever try to take your salvation away from you. Amen. There is, we can't even do it, yeah. right? You're saved and you're saved. That's it. But there are any doubts in your heart. Just don't look at your brain. Because when you look at 1 Corinthians chapter 15, where it talks about gospel of Jesus Christ, verses 1 through 4, some people believed in vain. They just know it in their head. So many people out in the world, because of so many praise and worship, you know, idiots out there, yeah. stupid people, yes. they get brainwashed. I and mean, I could tell you confidently because I was in that group. Sure. All you did was praise and worship. You received Christ every single Sunday. Why do you have to receive Christ every single Sunday, no. Right? And then you always think that, okay, if I don't have a good day, am I really saved? If I don't confess all my sins, am I really saved? So you'll never assurance of salvation. Right. Right? So that's why, you know, when you face the right doctrine, when you hear the right doctrine, you know, right salvation plan, you just have to check. Yes. Nothing wrong with checking. Yes. Right? You are a fool. If you think that you're going to heaven because you think that you were saved, because you think that someone told you you're saved, oh. and then you burn in hell. Right. Man, that's the worst thing to happen to anybody. Think that you're just, and then suddenly you wake up and it's hot. Man. Uh-oh, heaven shouldn't be burning like this. But it's you, though. There's always problems with you. Like doc I mean, best phrase that Dr. Bob Jones Sr. ever said. The problem is with you. Yes. Why? You're relying on someone else all the time. You're relying on your false humility, false assurance. Forget it, right? If, you're not, if your salvation is not based on the word of God right. and only trusting Jesus Christ and him alone, and if you do not know for sure, you just got to get it right. Amen. And you got to make sure where you're going after you die. Sometimes I have to park it there because there are many church scores out there who's been a church member since they were a little kid, but they've been thinking, washed, brainwashed by the devil. You're okay. You're safe. How dare they? Your mom went to church even before you were born. You know, doesn't mean anything, right? right. It's up to you to know where you're going after you die 100%. And the answers, there are correct answers out there. It can't be, I think I'm going. It's, that's not a good answer, right? I hope so. That's not a good answer, right? You have to have a 100% assurance. Amen. Yeah, it's a simple answer, though, because I trusted Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. And his blood washed away all my sins yeah. once and for all. Most simple answer, but the hardest answer. Because so many people have their own self-righteousness. Yeah. You know who's the hardest people to get saved? Because, because of who, people who have self-righteousness. Yeah. Yeah. People who do a lot of charity work, people who think they're nice, people who think they're kind, people who think they're meek, people who think they show a lot of compassion to others, right. like the Mother Teresa of the world. Come on. Right? According to her testimony, she ain't in heaven. No. Right? She's burning in hell. That's yes. it. Right? I mean, we, have, we have some people who get so offended. It's according to the word of God. And the testimony, you can't, don't get mad at me. Yeah. You could, we'll have a discourse, a conversation. But you got to have your final authority as the Amen. word of God. Amen. Yeah, and of course, you know, this person mentioned that some people don't even come to our church anymore. Billy Graham, yeah. right, compromiser, yeah. right? Yes. I Man, I talked to Dr. Walker in Florida. I mean, he, that started a long time ago, you know. Not just recent. I mean, it started a long time ago. He's compromising ways, right? Dr. David Walker, you know, our summer camp preacher. Yes. And we had a little discussion about it. So it's not what you see and what you hear. It's never always truth, especially when it comes from the media. And when it comes to your own salvation, it's not what your mommy, daddy tells you. It's not what I tell you. It's got to be you. Amen. You have to have 100% assurance, conviction, faith, and know that I've been justified through Jesus Christ. Yes. 
paid for by his blood once and for all. Woo! You don't have it? You don't have it. Yeah. Then have it. Come on. Right. Then get it. Today. Receive it. Right now. Bible says now is the day of salvation. Amen. You want to be just in front of God. You never want to take chance of being unjust in any way. And if you're not in Jesus Christ, if he's not your Lord and Savior, you're eternally unjust. And you're burning hell forever. Amen. Yeah. So now going back to our points now. Point number one, when it comes to when you fall, when you have to get up again. Point number one, you have to repent rapidly. Amen. Repent rapidly. Amen. Rapidly. You know what rapid means, right? Arriba. Apurate. Right? Bali, Bali. Right? Bali. Yeah, Bali. Yeah. Right away. You can't take too much time. A lot of people, they fall. I've fallen many, many times. I've fallen past week too. I mean, we're all human beings. We fall. And then when I'm referring to falling, you've fallen into your own ways, your sin, sinful ways. Not just physical falling, okay? It does happen to people too. Be careful, right? When you do fall... When you do fall into your sinful ways, you have to repent yes. rapidly. Yes. You know, it's, a, it's a very good illustration for anybody. You know, the scariest thing for someone, something to happen to someone when it comes to medical emergencies is when they have stroke. Yeah. When people have stroke and when they fall, it all depends on how quickly they get medical attention. The longer it takes, the more severe their condition is going to be. And if they never get medical attention, they die. Yeah. And a lot of people who live by themselves without the right system in place of notification, you find them dead, right? Cause could be stroke. Sometimes it's heart attack too. Spiritually speaking, if you don't repent rapidly, after you've fallen into your sin, you're going to become more sick. Yeah. You know, your condition is going to become severe, more severe as time passes right. by. So you have to get right with the Lord right away, right? Amen. Because that's something called sin is so sneaky and it's so strong and it's so addictive. Even if you went through blowout, even if you went through times of refreshing, even if you went through summer camp, even if you went through a jubilee, it's yeah. still there. Yes. You can't get rid of it no. until the day of redemption, until the rapture, until you leave this earth. Yeah. You're still going to be stuck to it like leeches, yes. right? Yes. I mean, I, I, think, I think I've had leeches on me before at a lake, yeah. I don't know, dirty lake, right. you know. Or like if you go to Amazon or some kind of places, there are leeches everywhere. Yeah. And then they stick to you. And then they will not let you go. And you give them enough time, they'll try to suck your blood everywhere. Yeah. Right? So what do you have to do? You have to get rid of it. Yes. How are you going to get rid of it? And when it comes to your sinful ways, you have to repent. You have to confess your sins and turn away from it. Yeah. Quickly. Amen. Right away. Because if you don't do it, if you, don't, if you miss this first step of repenting rapidly, you can't get up. It's going to be so hard for you to get up. I mean, think about it. You, fall, you fell like right there. Say, I fell, you know, and then I need to get up. Yeah. Man. But it's almost like your burden is getting heavier and heavier. Yeah. But when, when you first fall and you still have the energy, it's easier to get up. That's good. You have to get up quickly. Yes. It, how many of you guys had your legs fall asleep in the past? Amen. Because you've been sitting down in certain positions for a long time, right? right? Yeah. It's, it's not a good feeling. No. It's, like, you know, it's like a stinging feeling, yeah. you know, like the blood flows at it again. And then you have to like kind of stand there until everything kind of settles down, yeah. right? And then it takes longer and longer and longer. So, <laughs> can you imagine? Spiritually speaking, you've fallen, and you're in that same position for a long, long time. Wow. How long do you think it's going to take for you to get up? When you could have gotten right with the Lord right away, it would have taken you 
couple hours, maybe minutes. Yes. And then you get right, turn away from that sin, and go your way, serving the Lord. But now you're just stuck there. And then many Christians can never get back up. Bible says, just men fall seven times and rises up again. To me, as a Christian, you fall every day. Yes. And you have to rise up again every single day, yes. every moment. What sin caused you to fall down in the past week? There's something. Yeah. Right? Amen. You're like, oh, I never fell last week. You're a liar. Right. Man, you're the biggest liar I've ever Amen. seen. Amen. It's like when we go door knocking or <laughs> witnessing, you know. Are you, do you know you're a sinner? No. I never killed anybody. I never robbed a bank. I'm like, do you have your lie before? No. I mean, some people say, I never lie. You're just lying to me. Yeah. I mean, have you ever disobeyed your parents before? No. <laughs> well, you're a liar, you know, because everybody commits sin. Yes. So you and I, I'm sure, I'm taking a leap of faith, am I? No. Because what the Bible says and because who we are as a human being, weak human being, even though we're saved, we have new men, we need, we need to be renewed, renewed daily, but we always tend to serve and please our old man here and there. Hopefully not all the time. Amen. It happens. So what have you done with it? Did you repent rapidly and turn away from it completely? Amen. Right? And there's a slew of sins out there. Yes. There's a slew of things that you've been addicted to, yes. right? It could be something that you see. Right. It could be something that you feel. Yeah. It could be somewhere that you go to. It could be something that, you know, you do. So yeah. you, you have that problem. Each person has different yes. problems, right? Yes. Different sin addictions that, you know, holding you back. Then you have to resolve it. Yes. You have to quickly and one of the ways to do it most quickly is that you have to examine yourself honestly, right? Don't be a fool thinking that, you know, it's just one-off day. It's not just one-off day. Oh, no, it's just anomaly. No. <laughs> Sin is not an anomaly for you and me. Right. It's a normal thing that happens to us all the time. Yes. It's an anomaly that you and I stop sinning. By grace of God, there it is. Yes. right? Yes. That's special. That's peculiar, Amen. right? But when you fall back into sin, it's normal, yes. right? It's something that devil's trying to get you every single moment, even right now. Yeah. So what did you do? I mean, that is a simple question. So you committed that sin again. So what did you do? Did you get on your knees, get right with the Lord, or... Did you dwell upon it? You're looking for that justification. I needed to do it because I needed to support my family. Man, that's a good justification, Christians. You say it all the time. I had to do this because I had to feed my family. You know, I got to make money. You know, I mean, money doesn't grow out of tree, right? I can't find it when I dig it, right? right. So you're like, Lord, I have to do it. But at what cost? You compromised. Yeah. You committed sin. Right? And then I don't have to give you excuses or I mean examples. You have all your excuses and examples. Yeah. You did it because of this, this, and that. You know, your attitude is very toxic. That would just get you to backslidden state that you're in forever. Now you can't get out of it. You just fall in and you're gonna stay there. Unless you really, really examine yourself and get right with the Lord. Really spend time with him, not just the crocodile tear time, but truly spending time with him on your knees and examine why you were at that place, why you did that, and getting rid of all the justification excuses. You'll never change. Amen. You'll never change. Yeah. You're like that domestic abuser who says sorry to their wife, Sorry, sorry, honey. You know, the emotion got the best of me. I'm sorry. And you do it over and over and over again. 
you're, how are you so different when, it, when you continue to commit sin over and over and over again? You're like, drug addict out there goes to, you know, anonymous meetings or alcoholic abusers. You know, I'm, I'm going to stop, right? But fundamentally, your heart will always look for that justification, and you haven't gotten rid of that. Yeah. You never told the Lord, Lord, even if I die, I'm not going to do it anymore. I mean, when was the last time, or did you ever have time with the Lord, spend time with the Lord, and you told the Lord, Lord, man, this sin has gotten a hold of me for a long, long, long time. I've been addicted to it. My wife doesn't know. My husband doesn't know. My children doesn't know. They don't know. My mom, grandma never knew. It's just between me and you know, Lord, because you are Almighty God. I, even if I die, I don't want to do it. Amen. When was the last time you even had that dedication and commitment, right? right? Yeah. Even with that mindset, you still go back to it here and there. Even we, if you don't even have that kind of desire, dedication, heart, forget it. You're going to go back to that sin over and 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 over. Easily. And that same thing that you always confess. I mean, isn't it ironic, right? You say, Lord, I want to be more holy. I want to serve you. But you're like spitting at his face, but I'm still going to commit sin over and over and over. You don't say it with your mouth, but you say it with your actions. Yes. I mean, they say actions speak louder than words, right? Yeah. I mean, I could tell you I love you 100 million times, but my actions show all this hate. It doesn't mean anything. Right. Right? So where are you right now when it comes to your sins? You've fallen. You definitely have fallen. Yes. Every Christian, we have fallen. Have you repented rapidly? If you haven't, then you'll be stuck there. There's no hope for you. There's no hope for me. I mean, how in the world Lord's going to change you if your heart's not right? Yeah. Right? We're not Calvinists. Amen. We have free will. Thank you, Lord. Yeah. Right? Yes. What happens to us is based upon our actions, Amen. our thoughts. Right. Lord's not going to just drag you out of it. By His grace and mercy... You know, you and I aren't dead yet. Thank God for that, right? Thank God that we still have something that we can do for the Lord while we can breathe, while we can talk, while we can move, right? But don't take any more chances. If you have not taken that first step of repentance, you have to do it today. You have to do it right now. And you know what that sin or what those sins are. You know, stop justifying it. Just get right with the Lord. So that's point one. So you have to repent rapidly, right, if you want to get up again. And then secondly, you have to refocus with resolve. You have to refocus with resolve, right? Now you've gotten right with the Lord. Now you have confessed your sins. Now you've examined. Now what, now what do you have to do? Now you have to refocus. You have to refocus. It is crucial that you go back to the Word of God. Yes. Crucial that you go to prayer. It's crucial that you start obeying everything that God has told you. Amen. Right? It's off or not. You get right with the Lord. You say, I'm going to turn from my simple ways and turn to Him. But you're just stuck there. You got to move on. I mean, you got to refocus with resolve and you got to start doing something. Right? Sanctification is what? Turning away from something to something, right? right. right? You turn away from your sin, yeah. and you turn away, turn to godly things. Amen. Yeah, right? If you've been listening to bad music, then listen to godly music, Amen. right? Amen. If you've been looking wicked, you know, images, right? Start looking at good images, yes. right? Right? You've been smoking and drinking, you know, right. you know change it to something else. Stop. Yeah. Right? I don't know. My, well, what, is, what alternatives are out there, Read right? The Bible. Yeah. Eat the Bible, Amen. right? Amen. You know, smell the Bible, yeah. right? Smells good. I know. I mean, 
this is this is not like you know biblical or anything. So don't you know don't crucify me with it, right? You know, if you're so addicted to you know marijuana or drug smell, I don't know. Maybe you go like this, open the Bible, and then get it closer to you, yeah, right? Amen. Do something, oh. right? You have to change your behavior, yes. yeah, because if you do not do it, what happens? You're gonna fall again. Yes. Yeah, you're gonna fall. And if you're not refocusing yourself unto the Lord, what's going to happen? You're going to start dwelling on the past again. Right? I mean, what's wrong with you and me? We always go back to the past. Like, human beings never learn from history, right? They say. We just go back to the past. Oh, man, that pleasure. Man, that good thing that I felt. I got to go back. Right? Because you're not focused. You have to refocus, and you have to have some resolve. The Bible says, quit you like man, yeah. right? Yes. I mean, have some backbones, you know. You've got to stand up for something, yes. you know. When temptation comes, are you going to be like, oh, man, I got to, I'm sorry, Lord. I'm doing it again. I mean, how many times have you said that before many you committed times. your sins? Right. You knew you were doing something wrong, yes. and then you still did it. Ah, that's, that's, that's a reality, right? You're telling the Lord, I know it's wrong. I know you shouldn't, I shouldn't do it. I know it's sin. I'm too weak. So I, I, and then you don't even finish your sentence, and you just do it. And then a little later, you're telling, Lord, I'm sorry. But it doesn't happen right away because it's not sincere. Because you save the space in your heart. I'm going to do it again. You're not completely sold out. You haven't repented 100%. Because many Christians, they always save that little spot in your life, in your heart, where, Lord, 95% of the time, I'm going to serve you. Yeah. But when things get tough, when I need that money, when I need that something, that 5%, I have reserved it for myself. Yeah. That's why you never completely erase everything that you need to erase. Yeah. You never completely get rid of something that you need to get rid of, right? I mean, what? Oh, yeah. You know, if, I'm, if I need some, how should I say, relief, this is the person that I call, right? Oh, well, well I, whatever it is, right? You raise that number. Amen. It's going to lead you to sin. You win this to him, accept that Christ, praise the Lord, reject that Christ, no good for you. You raise a number. I'm like, oh, well, he's my friend. So what? Who's more important, Lord Jesus Christ or your worldly friend? Yeah. Who's causing you to commit sin over and over and over? And that's just a personal thing. If it's like a app, I mean, app things, right? Now, nowadays, it's all about cell phone. And there are apps everywhere. Yes. If certain apps are causing you to sin, Delete it once and for all. Yeah. And put a parental block there so that you never go to it. Yeah. Yeah. I'm too old to have a parental block. So what? I help you? you are a little kid like, who's committing sin over and over. Yes. So put a block there. Amen. Yeah. Yes. I mean, you have a pornography problem. You have yes. a gambling problem. Yes. You have whatever other, you know, Facebook, face chat, right. blah, blah, you know, fling, start the old fling Come stuff. On. Yeah. You know, yeah. erase it. Yeah. Get rid of it once and for all. Yeah. Why can't you do it? Oh, because you, you're full of sin. Yeah. Because you love yourself too much and your fleshly desires, yes. and you don't love the Lord. Right. That's why you can't erase it. Yeah. I mean, Lord shed all of his blood. Yes. Right. He didn't even look like a human being. Yeah. I mean, he was a disfigured person on the cross. Yeah. He went all of that for you. Yes. And you're like, oh, I need to reserve some space for my own you know, pleasure. But you know, you're full of yourself. Who are you? Right? You're bought with a price yes. once and for all. Who's your master? Is it you or Lord Jesus Christ? Right? Who are you trying to please? God or you or people around you? So you have to get rid of it. What are you doing? I mean, if you're not focusing, and if you don't have that resolve, you're that person who's going to just repeat number one. 
And it's not even good number one. You don't even do it rapidly. You do it here and there. Like, ah, oh, I go up to what you might call it, you know, blow out. We have Jubilee. That's like a repent time. Wow. Like a, like a two or three times a year. You're just like that CEO crowd. Christmas is their only crowd. And like I do like a once like every other moon, right? Well, if there's a special blood moon out there, I'm going to get right with the Lord. And then you live the same. And devil's very happy. Okay, check mark. I don't need to worry about him or her. You know, I'll go to someone else. That's why whatever that sin is, you have to have that resolve. You got to get rid of it. Yeah. Yeah. Man. Ask your wife to check your phone. Top to bottom. Ask your husband to check your phone, top to bottom. Children, ask your parents to check your phone, top to bottom. Check every chat history. Because you think you're smart. Well, I could erase everything. What do you think there's a cyber forensics out there? If they wanted to, you know, they could take everything out. And Google and stuff, they listen to you all the time, right? Yes. That's why suddenly some stupid ad comes up, you know? Sure. You know? in your own language, yeah. you know, sometimes. <laughs> and then, wow, okay, they are listening. They're recording things. Yeah. So do it. Yeah. Don't just be at a, you know, no man's land, gray area. I don't know what to do. If it's right, you do it. That's right. Amen. Simple as that. Yes. What do you even have to debate about it? Right. You know, just do it. Yeah. And then if you take the right step, Lord's going to help you, yeah. bless you, and strengthen you. If you take the wrong step, you're just going to go backwards. Backwards. You can't get up. right? So whatever it is in your life that's hindering you, stopping you from fully serving the Lord 100%, you have to have the resolve. And you have to focus, refocus. Because I know many of you guys, when you first got saved, you had that first love. You were willing to give up everything for the Lord. You want to do everything pleasing to Him. You got to refocus. Get back to that first love. You have to. If you can't get back to first love with Lord Jesus Christ, forget about going back to your first love to your wife and your husband and even your children. It's going to be all fake. It's all going to be in a fleshly induced effort. Whenever you try to do it fleshly, it never ends up well. you got to trust the Lord to help you to get through it and do it. That's why when people who truly does well in the Lord, they always give credit to the Lord. Amen. They're always so thankful. Man, Lord's helping me. Who has tainted his reputation, himself, you know, did all the wrong, worst testimony a human being could do, but he is still faithful to lift me each time I fall. Yes. Man, you have that kind of mindset. Yeah. Right? Then you could, there's a chance for you, Christian. And thirdly, you have to rebuild righteously. You have to rebuild righteously. So when you get back up, you got to have good foundation, right? Yes. You have right teaching, right word of God. The reason why, even if you're focused on the Lord, even though you repent rapidly, you still constantly fall, is that you don't study the word of God. Right. You don't yeah. spend time in the word of God. You have to. Yes. It's a... Imperative, it's a command. Study to show thyself, approve unto God. 2 Timothy 2.15, you have to, right? Word of God has saved me from falling many, many times, right? And he will save you and me continuously. So we have to rebuild righteously because you've fallen, I've fallen. Then we have to get back up again. Then we have to build our strength. We have to build our leg strength. We have to build our arm strength. We have to build our brain. Then how are we going to do it? With worldly literature, with TV, shows, psychologists, psychiatrists out there. No. Word of God. That's it. Word of God. I mean, you have more questions? There are, you know, commentaries out there. Go to deeper ones. You know, Dr. Ruckman, commentaries, right? Yes. Just read through it. You don't need other junks out there anyways, right? right? Just be strong in the fundamental doctrines yeah. and then grow and grow. Then when certain things come your way, you're like, mm-mm, nope. According to the word of God, 
according to chapter and verse. Amen. I can't do it. Yeah. <laughs> right? Yeah. I mean, it's simple. It's like abstain from all appearance of evil. Amen. I mean, it will be like real to you. No, 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 no. I can't do it. Okay. And then it becomes more clear and clear and clear. And this word of God have that right to edge effect. You know, it's just piercing. Yes. It's like whenever sin comes your way, you just slice it off. Man, that's a great feeling, right? Yeah. When you're victorious. Yeah. But think about, think of yourself in a medieval age, right? Woo! You're fighting against the enemy. Yeah. And you're, you have that sword, yeah. the word of God. Amen. And then you're just swinging. Each time you swing, you defeat the enemy. Amen. And then strength does not come from you. Yes. Strength coming from the Lord. Amen. And you're defeating it over and over. Man, and your life is full of victory. And then you give all the glory to the Lord. Yes. That's a person who fell, but he's constantly rising again, letting the Lord lift him up because giving all of his being and will to the Lord. Yeah, but it's free will. You and I have a choice. We could go the right route. We could always go to the wrong route, right? So you have to choose. And then lastly, you know, when you fall, if you want to get up again continuously and quickly, you have to rejoice repeatedly. You have to rejoice. You know, our Christian walk, some people think it's such a dreary, you know, it's just a military fight after fight after fight. You know, you just have the dog face all the time, just like the battlefield out there. No, you could have rejoice. Amen. You could be happy, yes. right? You could be swinging the sword while you're smiling, Woo! you know? You could be shooting while you're smiling yeah. because it's not you. It's Lord doing the battle for yeah. you. Thank you're you just Lord. a tool. Amen. Think of yourself as that, you know, M16, you know, those Glock guns, Lord just pulling the trigger. You're that tool letting the Lord pull the trigger, Amen. right? You know, I mean, people will take it out of context. You know, this guy's encouraging people to shoot. No, <laughs> spiritually, okay? Yeah. Spiritually, you, you wicked people out there, right? So I'll stick with the sword, okay? So you, you swing the sword. You know, Philippians 4.4 4 says what? Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say rejoice, yeah. right? Yeah. You can't have this victory and joy even though you fall because you could get up again and you could let the Lord help you get up. Amen. And then, you know what's the better thing? You don't have to look back. The sin that caused you so much harm for so many, so many years, you get right with the Lord. And then you don't have to look back. Because the Lord doesn't look back. Amen. Lord's like, he's not going to judge you, right? Yeah. Like the pastor says, in Philippians 3, 13 and 14, forgetting those things which are behind. You have to forget it. Right? Forget. And what are you reaching forward to, right? You, know, you, you reach forward to the mark. And then what's that mark? Right? That's Lord Jesus Christ. He's it, right? That's why even if you fall, you've refocused and you just go to the Lord, right? Just, you know, looking unto Jesus, right? Amen. The author and finish of our faith, right? Amen. Our famous verses in Hebrews chapter 12, right? One through three, just go. Just reaching forth and go. And you could do it rejoicingly, happily, joyously. Yes. Uh, I sure am happy, say, if I fall and I get up. That's good because I could move again, yeah. right? right? Think about hospitals, people who fell, who hurt themselves, right? Yes. And they get healed and they get up again. Yeah. Man, that's a great joy, yeah. right? Amen. Spiritually, we always fall, yeah. right? It's a great joy. You have to rejoice that you've gotten up again. You have yes. to thank God. For his faithfulness, thank God that he has lifted you up again. Yeah. So you could march on continuing continuously. You're going to be like that. And I'll conclude with this. You and I, you know, should learn and always have this in our heart. We're like that prodigal son, right? Yeah. You know, we do that repentant return, Amen. you know, over and over. Yeah. Yeah. But great is the best thing. That our Father is waiting for us Amen. continuously. Yes. And He will always be happy when we come back. Yes. Yes. Think about it. You know, if you are somewhere far away, 
don't you like, don't you have, doesn't smile just come in your face and man, I have someone who loves me is waiting for me. Amen. I just have to get right. Yes. I just have to leave the far away country, yes. far, leave from the world, leave from my flesh, leave from the devilish ways, yes. just go back to him. Amen. Right? That's all you got to do. Christians, you and I do fall, but the most important thing is how you and I get up, how fast we get up. That's going to determine how we serve the Lord. Yes. Let's close our eyes. Let's pray. Dear Father, Things of the world, the devil and the flesh, constantly keep us fall. We fall on a daily basis. But you are faithful, Lord. And you lift us up. As long as we get right, as long as our heart is right, Lord. If there are some things in our lives, Lord God, that have stopped us, pulled us, hindered us, made us addicted, not to serve you 100%, not to give you 100% of all of us. Pray that we'll get right with you. Help us to truly examine ourselves. Don't let it be just a crocodile, just a vain words coming out of our mouth, but really, truly get right with you, confess things that we need to confess, and turn away from it once and for all. I pray that, Lord God, you'll bless each one of us, and I pray that, we really want to see you fast, Lord. This world is just getting worse and worse. We do want you to come back right now, Lord. Even so, come, Lord Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.